Hey everyone, this is Joe Minardi, and I've just got a quick educational point of care ultrasound video that I wanted to go over. And what I want to go over in this little clip, little video, is stop reflexively ordering quantitative HCG levels on every pregnant patient that shows up in the emergency department. And I'll go through some of the things with ultrasound that can help you and why and talk about why why they're probably not necessary in, in at least some of our patients if not a fairly uh, significant portion. What I'm going to advocate is if you see that chief complaint pop up on your board or come up in your chart stack or however you get your chief complaints, if you see the chief complaints of pregnant patient with you know, pain or bleeding or both, uh, assuming they're otherwise hemodynamically stable, then just walk in the room do a history and physical and uh, point of care ultrasound. And a lot of times you can answer most of your questions with history, physical, uh, ultrasound, maybe a little bit of chart review. And in some cases, maybe you don't need any labs at all, or maybe the labs you need are minimal. I will say that I remember ever since residency, when I saw those chief complaints, I kind of just reflexively ordered CBC, basic metabolic panels. Sometimes you get COAG studies, uh, quantitative HCG, and uh, type an RH. But there's a lot of scenarios where history, physical, point of care ultrasound, and possibly a little bit of chart review can answer most of the questions you need, and you don't need to send off uh, a bunch of lab tests, waste time, waste money, waste resources. And in a significant portion of these patients, they can be out of your emergency department in 15 minutes with some reasonable answers and risk stratification education going on. So let's take a look at this case. This is a, a young woman who's known to be pregnant, who presents with some vaginal bleeding, not really a ton of cramping. And so in this case, I walked in the room, started taking history, physical, and doing an ultrasound. And let's just take a look at some of the things, some of the findings on this ultrasound that we saw. And this is all transabdominal, so things that, you know, not pretty much, you know, non-invasive way to take a look at things. What do we see? So we see uh, an enlarged uterus, and right away we can identify uh, a fetus within that uterus. You see here, and let's just, let's cut to one of these clips here. So just in this first clip, so we see the uterus here, we see the placenta looks to be you know, significantly, mostly posterior. We see the fetus properly placed, central in the uterus, it looks and the patient's stated dates are around 12-ish weeks and just, you could certainly do some measurements to confirm that. However, with some reasonable experience, you can visually estimate that 12 weeks looks to be consistent with what we're seeing here. So I don't always necessarily measure dates if things look like they line up with what, what's been stated. And especially when the patient's already got established dates from an earlier ultrasound. Obviously, if there are no dates established as of yet, you may want to try to do some more specific measurements and establish some dates. But again, we see uterus here. This is a sagittal section. We see the bladder up here. Now, so far we've seen fetus. We see fetal parts. And remember, in the emergency department, even in the OB-GYN triage areas and the hospital wards and things like that, you're not here to do a fetal anatomic survey. This is an emergent, urgent ultrasound just to confirm proper placement of the fetus, fetal viability, things like that. And if you want to do measurements, if you think you need to do measurements, I think that's reasonable. I don't always think they're necessary. And here's our clip where we can see cardiac activity. Obviously, we do some measurements here. We see those numbers look reasonable, uh, heart, fetal heart rate of 170. So th those are the main notable findings. Again, we point out we see uterus, posterior placenta, reasonable just eyeball estimation of amniotic fluid volume looks appropriate and within normal limits again just by a visual estimation i don't typically do amniotic fluid indices in the emergency department unless i see something catches my eye that looks abnormal uh, here we can actually see left ovary with a small simple little cyst again summary what we see this patient she walks in the emergency department known to be pregnant dates are roughly 12 weeks we see a, a fetus that looks consistent with her stated dates it's a live fetus properly placed within the uterus and then on pelvic exam we can risk stratify further if there's any signs of impending miscarriage if the cervix is open or effaced or anything like that but essentially we have all the answers we need and if she's had any labs done if she's had any follow-up we can look at blood type 
from prior records. We don't necessarily need to repeat that if we can find a record of the patient's blood type and then kind of answer the Rogam question. So with this patient, as soon as I finished the history and the physical exam, this patient doesn't need labs at all. We don't need a CBC. This patient's not hemorrhaging. We don't need a quantitative HCG because we see uh, a live fetus uh, and HCG levels don't correlate after the first trimester anyway. So we, the number really means absolutely nothing. And so that's it. This patient can be, once you do history, physical exam, including a pelvic exam to check the cervix and see if there's any tissue at the os or active hemorrhage, the ultrasound along with history and physical tells you pretty much everything you need to know. The patient doesn't even need stuck. They can leave your department after you have a discussion about your findings and the risk stratification, any precautions they need to take, and then go home. So stop reflexively ordering quantitative HCGs in every pregnant patient. Even in the early first trimester people, if you walk in the room and you find an intrauterine pregnant then you don't really you don't need uh, an HCG level. You've identified uh, an active alive pregnancy, so you can be finished at that point. Stop reflexively ordering quantitative HCGs on pregnant patients. Uh, you may be able to answer all of your questions with history, physical, point of care ultrasound, and a little chart review, and save yourself and your patient a lot of time and be more efficient in your throughput in the emergency department. Hope that was helpful. See you again in our next video.